All right, our next speaker is Dr. Mei Yuan uh, at the University of Texas at Dallas. And she's gonna be talking today about geographic functions and implications of POIs. And Dr. Yuan has, is actually doing something very interesting today that I'm gonna go ahead and share in the chat, um, if that's okay with you, Mei? Oh, yes, please. Okay. Um, so she is always innovating in every way possible um, and is doing a new type of presentation today. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunities to share with some of my thoughts on this very interesting topical area, POIs. And, and in this uh, platform of presentations, and they should have a tool that you can comment on each slide that I'm going to present. So maybe have your comments, you agree or disagree with my thought or questions that you, you think we should talk about it uh, maybe after this presentation. And my emphasis here is really looking at the geographic functions and implications of POIs uh, with uh, two of my students that they have been helping out help, uh, on the data and also helping me shape my thoughts. Um, uh, many of you know that I have a great interest in activities, events, and processes. And I look at a lot of GIS databases or a lot of GIS studies that focus on what we have in different locations or different regions, um, but not much on how, what people do and how the facilities or the arrangement of space that influence human behavior. So I want to think about how POIs may have um, influenced on what we do or how uh, the, the character of the place and that influence what we do or shape our thinking or our spatial behavior. So um, when I look at this, uh, POIs, I'm really looking at three elements of it. One is what functions that POI provides, which is the services um, of a given POIs and how human use that particular services or relate themselves to that particular services or even one services or a, as a collective of the services. And we know that we might go to a restaurant um, to have a dinner, but we might choose that restaurant because it is in a, a shopping center with other facilities that you might want to visit before or after the meal. So uh, I'm thinking that if we look at uh, uh, services and collectives, we can look at urban land use and functions. And that's somewhat similar to what uh, Dickard just mentioned about ROIs. And then for looking at services and human, we can see location-based personalized services. And this, a lot of research on like uh, uh, POI recommendations or tourist activities here. And then with the collectives and human activities, collective POIs and collective human activities, we can really look at social network and how people interact with each, with each other at different POIs and at POI collective together. So in the following discussion, I want to highlight the key research as I see in one of the three, each of the three uh, areas of POI research. And then I, I want to share with you three uh, ongoing projects that I'm working on and hope that you, you will give me your comments and criticisms that help me improve my project and then discuss uh, maybe new research ideas out of the three projects. Um, so let me get started. So the first approach to looking at the collectives and POI services, and we we will assume that the uh, a grad uh, agglomerative cluster or POI type reflect urban functional zones. So uh, we might have business district, commercial district. Um, we have been doing in the past use the urban planning, but the POI provide us the opportunity to take a button up approach to look at emerging uh, zoning characteristics by the collection of POIs. So these are the uh, things that I have looking at in the uh, literatures that what people are looking at POIs to look at transportation network or building footprints or 
and DBIs, and then to look at humans' mobility accessibility within the e each area, and to look at environmental impact of different uh, like uh, uh, transportation activities, and also look at the uh, uh, urban forms and climate change that how POIs with the transportation and, and DVI and census data imply the urban form and um, uh, human activities. Uh, actually, let's see, something is not quite right in my screen, but that's all right, I can. So if I look at the, um, it, the research that we are currently working on is uh, on the collective and uh, POI to look at the zoning and location characteristics. And we assume that the existence of different TOI types at different locations and really reflect the location characteristics at that uh, uh, area. So uh, our research question is to looking at uh, traffic accident. Um, in the past, that uh, traffic accidents may be focused on the row of characteristic, the row morphology, intersection of the road, the curvature of the road, uh, and the construction of the roads. But we want to look at, well, whether POIs around this uh, 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 traffic accident locations that routinely have traffic accident. So every, uh, whenever there is an accident, it tend to occur at Monday morning, eight o'clock. And so we do, do we have a locations that have routinely traffic accident occurrences and how those kind of locations corresponds to uh, POI distribution around that location. So we look at the traffic accident in the city of Dallas, and this is our number of traffic accidents, and then also use the POI data from Matitude. So we identify routine traffic accident uh, locations, and then correlate that with POI data. And this project is funded by a, a NIST. They look at the uh, public safety for emergency vehicle dispatch. So then we were looking at the uh, uh, different POIs as, as around those locations, and there are a lot of POIs. And therefore, we categorize the POIs, and then based on the frequency distribution of the POIs, quantile it to different level as a low frequency of a particular POIs versus a high frequency of particular POIs. And once we change to the frequency level, we are able to uh, do uh, spatial association mining between POI categories and three type of location. The three type of location, one is a random location. So we just pick random points across the city of Dallas. And the second location is the locations on uh, just have traffic accident, but not necessarily routinely occurring uh, traffic accident. And then third location is the traffic accident that uh, um, for the routine traffic accident. Um, so the <laughs> sorry, I, the location one is the location with routine traffic accident, and location zero is the other traffic accident location, which is maybe occur any time and doesn't have a regular temporal pattern. And the others are random locations for comparison. So we, in the um, association rules, we find that the, the traffic accidents that are the routine the traffic accident locations are associated with a very high frequency of parking lot, of park entertainment locations and parking lot, and especially at entertainment uh, POIs, that makes a lot of sense that if you have a lot of uh, theaters or um, ballparks or uh, those big, huge sports events, and when you, when you have events r routinely take place uh, for competition, and then when you get out of the events, that is, you have a surge of uh, 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 vehicles coming out that I think conceptually we can see there's a possible to have a routine traffic accidents at those locations. So, and then we're also looking at uh, association between different POIs at, at different 
uh, locations. So here is the random location uh, used as a background comparisons. And you can see that they are all associated with the first quantiles of POI types. So very uh, low frequency of POI at, across different types. And then um, they all, this POI type all related to stores. So a lot of the non-random uh, random locations that those POIs are related to uh, stores that uh, it, it, it makes a lot of sense that restaurants will relate to the stores and entertainment locations that are more related to the stores. But then if you look at the locations have a routine occurring uh, accident and you find that they have different type of locations that are all associated with high frequency of POIs. And, and then they, these POIs, they are related to each other in a different uh, uh, association rules, which means they are co-located uh, in at different locations, even though they are all at the high frequency. So in summary, uh, th the current tentative summary for this study is that random location really are not particularly associated with many POIs and many POI types, but uh, POIs at the location with routine traffic accidents have strongest association with shops, stores, and restaurants. Uh, and entertainments have the highest association with uh, locations with traffic, routine traffic accident. And then uh, this is the uh, quiz study on the urban land use and functions associated with collective of traffic uh, POIs and human activities. And now we want to look at the uh, surface and humans, the how POI provide urban functions or urban services, and that relate to uh, human activities. And at this, this side of the topic, I'm more focused on individual POIs and individual person. And in the literature, I found that a lot of people use POIs to, um, uh, to either do uh, tour tool uh, recommendation, POI recommendations, and follow individuals uh, trajectories across POIs. So it may be based on their tweets or based on four square data or based on Instagram. They uh, relay individuals location to POIs and then try to based on their history to see well, what will be the most likely POI that individual is going to visit at the next time point. Um, so your mobility space in, across the POIs really show that what kind of uh, person you like, you know, people jumping from bar to bar will be different from people going from park to park and in terms of their preferences and in terms of their uh, 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 lifestyle. So in this research, uh, to look at individuals, and how the POI influence individuals' um, activities. I really take a well, uh, unusual turn in this regard. Uh, it's really to look at POI as a landmark and how POI influence humans' uh, spatial cognition. So uh, the question is that um, will POI predict dementia and Alzheimer's disease? And that, uh, what happened is that if you look at the early onset of Alzheimer's symptoms and four out of the 10 key symptoms in the early onset of Alzheimer's are related to spatial cognition or spatiality of uh, how we relate to space and how we remember location. And in the literature, you will find that uh, neurologically, there is uh, our um, cell uh, neural cell systems that really functions to record locations re record our roots so we have place cells and those cells there's nothing in our brain just to remember where we have been and there's a cells in our brain which is called grid cells that whenever we take the same route it, it will activate excited cells so those cells actually show the early uh, uh, 
uh, on a functional issues when someone have Alzheimer's disease. So, uh, and then there are other space cells uh, called uh, border cells, head orientation cells are helping us to find, uh, to navigate from one location to another location and help us to understand where we are at a given location. So the hypothesis, uh, the, the question will be, well, if somebody are in an environment that can having POIs or uh, a network systems can excite our space cells and grid cells, head orientation cells and border cells in our neural system, where that exercise of our uh, um, neural system will actually help us to delay the onset of Alzheimer or to slow down the progression of Alzheimer. Just like when we do exercise that we, we will be able to uh, improve our health and resilience to certain disease. So the, where the environment can provide the exercise for our brain cells to help us to, to uh, delay the neural de degenerative fun uh, disease like Alzheimer. So in this grant that uh, we really look at two things. One is environmental complexity effects and the occupation effects like Uber driver versus taxi driver and taxi driver. A lot of study in London show that uh, taxi driver in London have to memorize a lot of maps of the city of London. They actually have much more well-developed hippocampus area in the brain, which is housed this, um, the grid cell, border cell, and prey cell. And compared to Uber driver that follow the GPS, and I, I, if my hypothesis is correct, then the Uber driver probably will not have much impact on their uh, brain cell development. So in this study, what we did is we use a, a large database called uh, National Alzheimer Coordinating Center uh, have this um, within this years have so many subjects. So I I extract the subjects that stay in one place. I don't want them to move around within that uh, 15 years. So I only have uh, subjects stay in the same place throughout that uh, national survey. And unfortunately, they only give me three digit zip code uh, subject. Uh, area rather than individual address. So my area of um, resolution, area units is three digit zip code for those uh, 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 survey subjects. And so these, the subject have some people never developed Alzheimer and some people develop Alzheimer at certain age and some people develop Alzheimer, uh, only develop dementia, but not Alzheimer. So based on the, uh, the characteristic, the combination of an Alzheimer survey within it, each three digit zip code area, then I do a, a unsupervised classification, use the uh, um, agrammative clustering method in SKLearn. Um, so to, to, I didn't specify how many clusters I want, but what happened is that it naturally, which is to my great surprise, it gets three clusters uh, of the three digit zip code uh, area based on the Alzheimer patient composition. And so I have cluster one, uh, cluster zero, cluster one, and cluster two. And then if I really look into the composition, cluster zero is the normal most are the normal Alzheimer patients, and cluster uh, one is a lot of Alzheimer uh, patient develop into Alzheimer, and cluster two are most of patient develop or progression to dementia, not much into Alzheimer. So naturally, those uh, area since classified to the three groups that I want to uh, see whether. Uh, geographic complexity actually influence their um, uh, spatial cognitive ability. And these are the location, those page, uh, three digit zip code and each classification of that three groups show. So there is a good spatial and geographical distributions across those three clusters. 
And then what I did is I put a, I assumed that POI provide the landmark, which is stimulate the place cell in the brand. So I want to see that whether different POIs actually differentiate among the three clusters. And as you can see that the uh, uh, distribution of POIs and this uh, from safe, safe graph. So it's 100, 162 uh, top categories. So their distribution across those three clusters are differences in some way. And a lot of, a lot of cluster two and three have lacking certain POIs compared to the uh, normal cluster, which is cluster zero. And then when I just use POI composition, try to predict the uh, which, which clusters that that particular location belongs to. And I find that for the, uh, well, the POI uh, prediction can predict the three clusters around 15%. Uh, based on the POI alone to see that whether that particular location is belongs to the first uh, zero cluster, that's the normal cluster, or the high Alzheimer cluster, or in the transition from the normal to Alzheimer, the da Vinci cluster. And then I also look at the uh, network, the, the street complexity, and then the street complexity can put um, predict a little bit better over 50%. Uh, but this is just use the uh, uh, POI along, and this just use the network al measure along. So this just give us an uh, implication that there are some uh, possibility, the, P the number of POIs and type of POIs in your neighborhood might have a stimulative effect on your brain cells and which might uh, have a, a, a non-pharmaceutical effect on your uh, uh, neural degradation uh, to Alzheimer's disease. And of course, this is just a preliminary study so far. And what we are planning to do in the next stage is to develop measure of POIs and develop measures from the network uh, characteristics and uh, combined with a uh, demographic measure like a race, gender, social economic, education level, and exercise level, and then try to predict the, the risk of, of degradation of Alzheimer's disease. So stay tuned, we will have more findings later. Okay, so then the third one is looking at social network and intersect interaction, rather than look at POI itself, I want to look at what people do with the POI, which is the social event. Um, and so what we do is that the people visit places at the time repetitive are likely to relate socially. So there are literatures looking at, well, whether ABC people visit POI one, two, and three, four, and based on the time that they visit at the same time, and they can develop a social network among the people that visit the uh, common places uh, at the same time. But what I did here is, again, a preliminary work, is I really want to look at uh, social events because my assumption is that when we want to do something together, we have to have a proper POI to support our activities. So the question will be, how may POI types support different social events? So I have some com comments here that I'll use as my foundation of conceptual thinking of why I want to do this. And then we get the POIs from uh, SafeGraph and social events from Meetup. And this is part of the uh, uh, place I live called um, Plano, Texas. And can, as you can see from this map that um, different, these regions are, are very trendy, have like a singles, high tech, um, business people, so they they have different like a tech event or business uh, career development events uh, in different places around this area, and then we have uh, this place have a lot of green space, so the social events and POIs are quite different from um, this area here, and then in the middle, uh, as you can see, there are again a lot of POIs, but those are POI are related to social event. For the dream and sci-fi games, and if you look at closely, these are related to two schools 
uh, in this part of the city. So a lot of events here are related to uh, uh, family or school events or events that the kids like. So um, if we look at OPOIs and O events, and I apologize, the quality of map is not, graph is not very good because it's just too many different POI uh, categories here. But the idea is that different POI type support different events and at different ways. So a different color of the graph represent different type of a social events and different uh, long letter here represent different POI type. So some POI type only support a very few uh, limited in terms of number and category of social events and some POI type support a lot of all different kinds of social events. So if you have a lot of POI types, if you look at here, you say that the most important POI type is restaurant and drinking and food places because they support almost a thousand, uh, 1500, uh, over 1500 uh, social events of all different types, which is quite surprising because who would think that the religious events will be held at the restaurant? Well, at least I do that. Think about that before I do this uh, analysis. So different POI types serve very different social functions because they have different social events that help at different uh, POI area. So then this is what I commented earlier. I get the uh, POI geometry footprint from SafeGraph. Then I want to look at how the different POI type co-located to each other and how those events actually help each other in the same co-location. So this slide is to summarize what I found in terms of co-locations, uh, POI type and the event type. And then finally, I have a, a to find the association rule of co-location of POI type and association rules among event type. And I try to find uh, analyze the co-location of event to the co-location of POI type. And my computer just crashed because it take too much memory and I need to find a different way to do that. But again, my uh, my my ultimate goal is really try to find out how the co-location of POIs really support a broader spectrum of social events and how the social event collective reflect on the uh, the functions and capabilities supported by a collection of POI. And because it's very easy to collect POI data compared to social event data. So if we can build that connections between social events and POIs, then we can, based on the POI uh, collections in a region to know what kind of people here, what do they like to do, and what, what should we do to actually further encourage the, uh, community development in this area. 